Uh, so it's uh, our great pleasure to actually have this uh, part of the session, which is both an institute talk and also um, our big event here. So uh, to introduce our most eminent speaker, I want to uh, invite our director um, on stage now uh, so that he can do the proper introduction. Thank you very much. Good evening. It's a great pleasure for me to welcome all of you on this special occasion. Thanks to Satipra and the French consulate for having with us one of the most distinguished physicists that probably the world has seen. And it's our singular honor that I in Bombay is hosting Professor Sarge Harushit in our campus. We had a great day in terms of having these presentations, various meetings, and I'm sure that that has ignited the minds of many of our students in terms of what all can be done, new frontier areas, and in this particular area, probably the person whom we all look forward to the kind of developments that he has done for which recognized the Professor Sarge Harushin. Very briefly, I don't know if he doesn't need any introduction, particularly if you are a physicist. So I will not take much time because rather it should be mostly we want to hear from him. So let me introduce that Professor Sharghi Haroshi was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2012 for developing groundbreaking methods that enable measurement and manipulation of individual quantum systems. He has pioneered a research field called cavity quantum electrodynamics, which plays an important role in the development of quantum information science. He is an emeritus professor at the College de France in Paris and a member of the French Academy of Sciences. But what is very interesting is that this is not his first visit to our campus. This is his second visit after receiving the Distinguished Nobel Prize. He was here in the campus in 2015 under Tech Fest, where the campus had the opportunity to listen to him. But that being 2015, many of our students might have graduated. Of course, some of the professors are still there and the memory remains, but there are new students, and I think it will be a wonderful occasion for all of us to get this opportunity to listen to him. Thank you, and let's welcome him. to ask questions about fundamental things. It was eight years ago, and uh, my field of research has evolved a lot during that uh, time interval, and so I would be talking about new things, new experiments, which uh, were not possible in 2015. I have decided to talk about quantum information with Rydberg atoms. Rydberg atoms are the systems which I have used during my career to make the experiments in cavity quantum electrodynamics, which were, uh, I think it's okay like that. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Rydberg atoms are very special atoms which have exaggerated properties. These are atoms in which one electron has been excited to a very large orbit. And so it's, it is very weakly bound, and it means that this atom is sensitive to very small perturbations. 
And when I started working on these atoms, I was interested in their very strong interaction with microwaves. And this gave rise to the experiments which uh, were called cavity quantum electrodynamics, studying the interaction of these huge atoms with microwave photons in cavities. Since then, a new field has been developed in which one take advantage of the very strong interaction of Rydberg atom between themselves, strong Rydberg, Rydberg interaction, which has also led to very interesting experiments in the field of quantum information, quantum science. And uh, it's, it has now become a very active field of research in quantum information science. So I will talk about these two areas, brief probation, and one can just use them uh, in order to measure things with a precision, with a sensitivity which is much higher than those what we could do previously. I give you here two examples. These uh, figures show uh, what is called the Wigner and, and, radi and simple <coughs> radiation law coming from Maxwell's equations. This circular atom has you know, an orbit with radius scales as n squared, so it increases very fast with the principal quantum number. And you can give it a very simple explanation in terms of De Broglie wavelengths. In fact, it's a kind of running wave going around in a circle. And the quantization condition is that you have actually something which is macroscopic instead of 10 nanometers. So you, you win a factor of 1,000. And the pixel is a small LCD, a small liquid crystal uh, device. Which, uh, in which you can control the, the, the index of refraction of the liquid crystal by an electronic <laughs> procedure. And so each pixel can induce it. It costs a lot of money, but if you want to speed up your research, instead of doing that, which will take you two or three years at least to achieve, you can just buy this. And this is, I, I, I do this kind of uh, advertisement for free. I don't get any money from Pascal, but I think that, it's, a, it's a, the use of this startup is just to, pro, to provide devices which can be used for science by, by researchers doing basic science. Uh, so with this system, you can simulate what is called the Ising model of condensed matter physics. You have a, atoms at each side, and these atoms have two relevant energy levels, the ground state and the reflex state. The ground state can be considered a spin down, we accelerated the spin down and so on. <coughs> and, and we can start to do very beautiful and I think very interesting experiments exploring quantum phases, quantum complexity. And of course, all this is thanks to lasers. Without the lasers, all this would have been possible by group uh, which are led by young researcher Clément Serra and Sébastien Guelaise and their student at the LKP. And many other groups around the world are competing to try to, to get the best out of this physics. And thank you very much for that. Okay, thank, thank you very much for that uh, excellent, wonderful talk. So uh, I think we have time for some questions. Uh, so please raise your hands and the mic will come to you. I believe this is recorded. But yeah, please, uh, Naveen, over there. Yes, I, I have a question. Uh, why, why is the lifetime of Rydberg state so large? Why isn't there spontaneous emission? <coughs> because the spontaneous emission rate is proportional to the square of the acceleration of the classical emission. It's, it's a classical process, proportional to the square of the acceleration of the electron. <laughs>
Yeah. 